Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Avinash and in this video, I'm going to explain how we can join our uh, Amazon Linux EC2 instance to a Active Directory directory service. Okay, so as you are aware, like uh, I already made a video on uh, Active Directory service. So, so that is a prerequisite. So first go to that video and create your own directory service, then continue with this process. And again, I even made a video on how to join a Windows machine to directory also. So please go through that uh, video in the same YouTube channel. So again, quickly I'll tell you how to create a directory. So here is a directory. So just navigate here, click on set up a directory and AWS main is uh, Microsoft AD, then click on next standard edition or enterprise edition this is a standard edition i am going to use and what is a directory dns name so in my case i am using a dns name called directory dns name called avinash.com netbios name is optional if you want to give you can give any description and admin password so by default within our um, domain we are going to get a user called admin for that user, what password you want to give, you can give that password and you should, um, we are going to use this password whenever we are joining any, any uh, machine to the domain or even later on our course also, we are going to use this. So click on next, under what VPC you want to create and what are the preferred subnets. I'm going to pick episode 1A, 1B, click on next. That's it, click on create directory. It is going to take 15 to 20 minutes to create this directory. And I have created this directory a couple of minutes back and uh, here it is. So once this directory creation is completed and the status is going to set as active, then you're going to get a two DNS servers. Whatever the two DNS servers you have here, you need to update these records in our Amazon Linux EC2 instances. So if you are running in any private subnet, so th that is a important one. Without that, uh, your private subnet EC2 instance cannot communicate with this directory. Or to be in safe side, I'll, I just want to show you that option also. Okay, so here I'm going to launch an EC2 instance and I'm going to pick Amazon Linux AMI and T2 Micro. And I'm going with all the default options here. Storage 8 gigs. Tags, I'm going to call this as our Linux instance. Click on next. And I'm going to select an existing security group, WebSC, which is open with port number 22. Click on review and launch. So far, I'm using this key pair to get connected to my EC2 instance. But once we add this machine to domain, so whatever the user we are going to create uh, within this domain, we are going to use same user to get connected to our Linux instance also. All right, so it is in pending state. So meanwhile, what I did, I launched an EC2 instance in same VPC, and I have installed uh, Active Directory tools with this machine by navigating to server roles just to manage graphically i just want to create a user so so add roles and features and click on next and on the same server so what i did i have installed this package active directory domain services so once i got installed so i got um, active directory users and computers there i have a user called admin so by default, whatever the user you created while creating directory, that is a user and see here, do not delay it. So basically he's a first user who have full access. So make sure you do not delete this user. All right. So again, this, this, stop, this steps uh, explained in detail in our directory. So if you have not um, viewed that, please pay some time and go to that video and continue with this video. Okay, so here is my Linux instance and I'm going to grab the public DNS. And I'm going to get connected to this machine. So I'm opening putty, given host name, and browse the key pair, and I'm going to click on open. Just give yes, and the default username, as we are aware, ec 2 user. And sudo space su, switch to root user. As a first step, 
it is always recommended to update your machine with latest patches. So then the command is yum update iPhone Y. Okay, so it is updated with latest patches. Now we need to update the DNS settings for this machine. Whatever the name servers you have, DNS addresses you have, you need to grab this and you need to update the same in this EC2 instance. That is the best practice. So for that, we need to edit a file called dhclient.conf. Again, I'm using VAM editor to perform this operation. And um, within that file, you need to add a record with this. Super said, then space, domain, iPhone, name, iPhone servers. And uh, these, are, these are the two name servers I got. So make sure you add this entry in this dhclient.cnv. So just copy this or manually you can keep that. Okay, at moment it is showing only timeout 300. I press enter. So then I'm going to add uh, this. So basically this document, no, to save some time, I already copied all the settings. So I'm going to copy both and I'm going to paste this here, then escape colon wq, write and quit. So we have updated uh, and if you want to verify, just give uh, cat etc, dhcp, dhclient dot uh, conf and uh, there you can see super set and we got that. All right, so as a next step, we need to verify a thing under network scripts. So there we have an option peer DNS, make sure that is set up with yes. So let's navigate to etc, sysconfig. So there we have an option network scripts. So we have uh, multiple NIC cards here. The default NIC card is if CFC ETS zero. So let's view that. And if you observe peer DNS is set to yes. So you really no need to modify anything. And sometimes if you don't want to go with this option to edit your or update your DNS servers, what you can do, you can go to this file and look for if uh, IFCFG, iPhone ETS zero and here next to this, add two entries like a DNS one is equal to your IP address and enter DNS two is equal to that another IP address. You can give these two things. So once this is completed, you need to reboot your machine. Just give reboot and uh, our EC2 instance is rebooting. All right, that means we have set up our uh, name servers which we got from this Microsoft Active Directory. So they can communicate seamlessly. Now, once this is completed, we need to install a couple of packages in our Linux instance. So if you observe, these are the packages you need to install. And here you can see yum install SSSD is a package. Basically, SSSD stands for System Security Services Daemon. And uh, basically, this is going to use for um, uh, user entries, group entries, uh, which contains some uh, tools in our Active Directory and all. So then we need to um, install a package called RealMD. So basically, this uh, RealMD or RealMD is an um, debug service. Debug service means basically it is going to perform network, uh, network authentication and uh, domain membership in a standard manner. And what are the configuration changes you're performing? Basically, we are going to, this is the responsible service to join a domain. And uh, along with that, you need to install KRB5 workstation. KRB is like a Kerberos protocol and along with that you need to install Samba common tools. This is going to contain Samba DC, Samba Kerberos Fry and um, Samba test and VFS ciphers and all. So basically those are all going to install. So once our machine is rebooted and I'm going to restart the session. So I'm getting connected to this instance. So I'm using EC2 iPhone user and I'm clearing the screen and elevating my privileges to root. All right, so then uh, we need to install this given packages. So I'm going to copy this. 
and I'm pasting it here, click on enter. So as I have given iPhone Y, so that is going to install automatically. All right, that is completed. Now, what we need to do is we need to use this realm to join this machine to domain. So this is an important step. Again, as a what user credentials you are going to use this machine to join your domain. First of all, what is our directory DNS name? Avinas.com is my directory DNS name. So I have given that here. First thing, and what user you are going to use. While creating this directory, we have used a user. We By default, you are going to get a user called admin. And I'm going to use that user to log in. So it is going to prompt us to enter the password. So you need to enter the password. So, so I'm going to use this admin at rate avinash.com to this particular domain. Basically, this is a domain and this is a user credentials who can join this machine to domain so let's grab that information and i'm going to enter the same here click on enter then you can see it is asking password for admin at the rate avinas.com so what is the password you have given while creating your domain you can give that password so i have given a password click on enter there you can see the process is continued and here you can see the performing ldap look up on this DNS server and LDAP look up on this particular DNS server and it is successfully discovered avidas.com. So if you failed in this step, make sure you verify this DNS configuration and make sure you reboot the machine once, once you perform this step one. All right, so we got the required output and here you can see successfully enrolled machine in Pre-alarm. Now we need to move on to step three. So in step three, we need to enable SSSD configuration. By default, password authentication is going to set to no. We need to make it yes. So again, so as we are, as we are aware, we already did this. Um, so just go here, um, look for VIM, etc, SSH. And we have a file called sshd config. Edit this file. Now look for an option password authentication. By default, it is going to set to no for all our Amazon EC2 instances. So make it yes. So I'm scrolling down. Okay, so it is a feature I have to. Okay, you can do like a, you can you can search within this file. You can give a slash, then ESSWRD. Okay, I got it. So oh, so let me password authentication. Here is a file. Password authentication is set to no now. Press I. Now it is set to no, and I'm going to manually enter yes. Press escape colon wq right and quit all right so as we modified sssd configuration file we need to reboot that service so to reboot the service the command is service sssd restart and there you can see the service got restarted now whatever the users we have in active directory that user can authenticate now and we need to give required permission that users to perform activities on our EC2 instance. So for that, we need to add an entry in VI sudo file. So just give um, VI sudo, click on enter. Now just navigate bottom of this page and uh, add a couple of entries. So press I to go to insert mode and I have added a couple of lines here. Then you need to add this. Basically, we have hashtag means that is a commented one. So added the AWS dedicated administrator to group from abinas.com to this sudo or file. So you can rename or you can change these values in your file. So here I'm using 
administrators at the rate avinas.com so whoever is member of that administrators group they can directly join to this machine so i'm just adding these entries here or make sure you give two that's completely your option so i prefer to give both the lines so i just deleted it okay so press escape pull and wq to write this and um, that's it we just need to reboot so i'm going to reboot this machine and if everything goes well so we can directly join to this machine as a domain user so it is rebooting So you can give a right click and you can restart the session. It is pretty quick, but it is going to take some time. And you can find the screenshot of the DC2 instance here. Just go to actions, instance settings, get instance screenshot. There you can see this, uh, this is starting all the services. All right, seems it is ready. Okay, let's go here, uh, give a right click, restart the session and it is asking login as. Now, I'm not going to use EC2 iPhone user. I'm going to use admin at the rate avinas.com. Click on enter and it is asking password. So I'm going to enter password, which I given while created this user. And that's it. I logged into this EC2 instance by using domain admin. And if you give who am I? So, oops, I given typo. So, you are admin at the rate avinas.com. So, not just this user, whatever the user you are going to create in your domain, he can authenticate to this EC2 instance. All right, so let's do that quickly. So, here I have Active Directory users and computers, and I'm going to create a new user. Give a right click and click on new, and I'm going to create a user. What is the username you want to give? So I'm going to call this user as a YouTube demo. And his username is going to be YouTube demo at the rate avinas.com. Click on next. What is the password you want to give for this user? So I'm going to give a strong password for this user. And I'm not enforcing him to change new password. All right, just click on next and finish. So now one user got created YouTube demo. Let's try to log in as a user. So first of all, I'm going to exit here. The session got closed. Now let's grab this public IP address or public DNS, open putty and give the host name. And um, I really don't require this key pair, but however, so if you have, you can or you can. So, so then the username is YouTube demo at the rate avinas.com click on enter there you can see it is asking password for that user and i have given the password that's it now i have logged in as a youtube demo at avinas.com to this machine so you can verify so you are a youtube demo at avinas.com user and logged into an ec2 instance okay so you can you can give required permissions you can modify accordingly the settings but uh, this is the this is how exactly you can join your uh, Linux instance uh, to AWS managed directory services. Not only this, even you can uh, you can use this for AD connector also. Thanks for watching this video, guys.